Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Go Fly Prize announces $2 million final fly-off. Avidyne introduces Atlas Multifunction FMS for business aviation. And True Blue Power introduces products for Cessna Citation Longitude. Welcome to Aero News Network's coverage of NBAA Base. I'm your host, Sophie Herlock. Since being launched two years ago, 854 teams from 103 different countries have entered the Go Fly Prize competition for a chance to win over $2 million in prizes and to change the world by creating a safe and quiet personal flyer. In the fly-off, teams will compete to fly a six-mile course at a minimum of 30 miles an hour, perform a touch-and-go, and hover for a total flight time of 20 minutes before sticking a controlled vertical descent within a landing zone. The winner will take home $1 million with $250,000 prizes for each of the quietest and smallest entries, meeting performance goals, and a $100,000 prize from Pratt & Whitney for the design deemed the most disruptive. The Go Fly Final Fly-Off, the final event in the challenge, will be held February 28th through the 29th of 2020 at the historic Moffett Federal Airfield located at NASA's Ames Research Center in Silicon Valley. The final day of the Go Fly Fly-Off commemorates Leap Day with teams showcasing their flying devices, innovation exhibitions, master lectures with industry leaders, and the final test of the personal flyers. We'll be right back with Around the Patch. True Blue Power Advanced Lithium Ion Main Chip Batteries feature proprietary nanophosphate technology. They deliver three times the energy density and are more than 40% lighter than lead acid or NICAD alternatives. RTCA tested, FAA certified, available to OEMs today. The Sling 2, a modern economical flight training airplane for today's pilots. 120 knot crews, sporty handling, sliding bubble canopy, modern glass panel and dependable Rotax power. Available in LSA or kit versions. Check it out at AirplaneFactory.com. With all this news flying out of the aviation industry, it's time for today's trip around the patch. Rolls-Royce completed the acquisition of the electric and hybrid electric aerospace propulsion activities of Siemens following a period of employee consultation. Rolls-Royce said the timeliness of the deal highlights the fit of these activities to their strategy to champion electrification as they look to play a major role in the third era of aviation. SWAPA, the union representing pilots flying for Southwest, now believes it will be February before the airline returns its Boeing 737 MAX airplanes to service. Given the steps necessary to recertify the airplane, the union feels these timelines are the best case estimates and remain fluid. Earlier this month, SWAPA sued Boeing, saying the manufacturer rushed the airplane to market, costing its pilots around $100 million in income. Bone fragments found at a museum on the Pacific island of Tarawa may provide clues to the fate of Amelia Earhart. The bones were first discovered about three years after Earhart and navigator Fred Noonan disappeared in 1937 in a campsite on Nikumaruro Island. They were examined by British doctor David Hoodless in Fiji, but went missing shortly after. The bone fragments have been sent to the University of South Florida for a DNA analysis. Pilatus is celebrating the 50th delivery of the PC-24 Super Versatile Jet to a U.S. customer. The fleet leader has already amassed 1,400 flying hours in just 20 months of service. Pilatus will feature both the PC-24 and the PC-12 at the static display during NBAA base. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. Today is a new dawn. With a new name. Un nuevo logotipo. A new factor. Und einen globalen Kundenfokus. We are Continental Aerospace Technologies and we stand behind you.
there's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Avidyne Corporation introduced a new Zeus-mounted Avidyne Atlas multifunction flight management system for turbine-class aircraft and helicopters. The Avidyne Atlas includes a satellite-based augmentation system GPS navigator with required navigation performance and area navigation capability, including LPV, LNAV and VNAV, LNAV only, and approach procedures with vertical approach modes. The system also features a full QWERTY style keyboard with Avidyne's page and tab and hybrid touchscreen user interface, allowing the pilot to get to any function in only one or two button pushes. The touchscreen also provides full color moving map, plus geo referenced Jefferson electronic approach charts and airport diagrams. Avidyne CEO Dan Schwinn said the Avidyne Atlas is a next-generation FMS replacement specifically targeted to provide console-equipped jet operators with a highly capable navigation and flight management solution pilots will find incredibly easy to use. True Blue power equipment, including two DC to DC voltage converters, six DC to AC inverters, and two intelligent batteries, now power Textron Aviation's recently certified Cessna Citation Longitude. The ultra lightweight True Blue Power TB44 lithium ion batteries reduced the aircraft's empty weight by 60 pounds, adding payload capacity and increasing the aircraft's cruising speed. The TB44 battery's capacity check schedule offers owners and operators the longest battery maintenance interval in its class and decreases service costs up to 90%. True Blue Power DC to DC voltage converters provide power to the longitude's total air temperature pitted port heaters. The company's DC to AC inverters provide power to the aircraft's windshield heater system. True Blue Power inverters and voltage converters are lighter and smaller than competing units and require significantly less maintenance. And that wraps up today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Don't forget to subscribe and to check us out on Twitter and on Facebook. For more aviation and aerospace news, head over to aero-news.net. I'll see you tomorrow.